So September 6, 23, pretty big day. The largest open source uh, LLM has dropped so far. It's called Falcon 180B. It is uh, an open source alternative to a large language model like GPT. And it was trained with 3.5 trillion tokens and it's a 180 billion parameter model. And according to the release announcement, uh, it should be on par with GPT-3, somewhere between GPT-3.5 GPT and 4. And it says with more benchmarks and further fine tuning from the community to come. So to play with it, you can just try out their little demo, which I'll link in the video. That's a little chat bot that is pretty similar to uh, GPT-4. And so I thought I would just try a few prompts to see uh, how they perform side by side. So the first prompt, uh, I do have a GPT-4 subscription. The first prompt that I gave it was, how can I set AWS credentials on my laptop so that I don't have to explicitly pass them around in Python code? So GPT-4, by the way, as a developer, this is how I use GPT-4. This is why I pay for it, for these types of questions, which would take me several minutes of searching online. Um, so GPT-4 hits on four points. You could do it through the command line with AWS configure, which is correct. Environment variables, which is probably the way I would do it typically. Uh, configuration files, which are part of the AWS CLI, but you can just alter these configuration files directly instead of using the CLI tool. So that's exactly right. And then IAM rules for EC2 instances. So the EC2 instance itself could have uh, the permissions uh, to do this without having like the program passing the credentials in. And then GPT-4 also gives me some reminders about proper security. I like this. This isn't really what I asked for, but I think it's good context for what I'm asking about things like this. Falcon 180B, I asked it the same question. Um, so it hit on two of the responses, the CLI and the environment variables. And when I asked it for alternatives, it hit on the rest of them. So it did return the same content as GPT-4. Uh, the responses in this demo are a little bit more pithy. You're going to get shorter responses, but that makes sense. You know, this demo is going to get slammed today. So I also wouldn't want my model churning out, you know, 10,000 tokens. Um, but when I did ask it for alternatives, it um, it did do pretty well and kind of hit on the same topics. I think content-wise, the GPT-4 was still a little better, just do some nuances and that extra blurb at the end. But overall, I felt like the delivery of the content that I wanted was exactly the same. Uh, the next prompt that I gave it was I asked, write a poem in iambic pentameter about a kid who can't stop eating Cheetos and dies from it, which is pretty morbid, but I'm a weird guy. Um, so just some, some stanzas here that uh, stuck out to me. One fateful eve, the child lay still, his heart subdued a silent chill, for in his quest for crunchy glee, he lost the touch of life's decree. Uh, pretty cool. As the days grew long and nights turned cold, his tails of orange began to fold. For every snack, thought bright and keen, hides dangers oft unseen. So my first observation is this is not iambic pentameter. I mean, it kind of has the sound and cadence of it, but it's not 10 syllables per line. Almost none of these lines are 10 syllables. When I asked Falcon B, same question, um, I got a similar poem. Now, some of the lines are kind of cheesy. His fingers torn orange, his lips too, quite neato, but little did he know of the face, the fate that would greet oh. So that's kind of like, you know, crappy rhyming. But there are a couple lines in here that are pretty killer. A tumor of sorts or a stone to atone for all the junk food he'd eaten alone. So there's, they're basically saying that he died from a stomach tumor, whereas in ChatGPT, he's dying of a heart attack. One fateful eve, the child lay still, his heart subdued, a silent chill. I asked ChatGPT for the rules of iambic pentameter, and it does know that um, it has a 10 syllables um, as a rule. 
However, it also points out that these rules are often broken because they're very stringent. I didn't go further in asking it to correct the poem uh, to be syllabic, syllabically correct. Falcon B also it didn't um, didn't hit the syllable count. So first impressions, content-wise, they're both pretty good. Um, obviously, GPT-4 still has that polish; it stands out. But content for content, the Falcon demo was very good. Um, the thing I'm still paying for my GPT-4 monthly subscription just because I really like the interface. So I like that it outputs code that's formatted. I like that its responses are a, are a little longer. Um, but that's all just UI stuff. I believe somebody could probably write an interface that looks identical to Falcon 180. And if the interface is really all you're paying for, then at the end of the day, Google's going to come and eat their lunch. Um, so for now, GPT-4 is still excellent. It's still a great tool that I'm happy to pay for. But with how good these open source models are getting, um, if the UX is the only real distinguisher going forward, I can I can really see myself swishing to like a free or cheaper solution in the near future. Uh, so try it out. Let me know what you think and happy coding.